We're here at the 2011 National Festival of Young Preachers in Louisville, Kentucky, the second annual. And with us is the brainchild behind this event and the organization, the Academy of Preachers, the Reverend Dwight Moody. Dwight, thanks for talking with us. Thanks, it's great to be here. Now, this is the second year. How did this festival get started? My work at Georgetown College with ministerial students convinced me of the need for an effort to encourage young people toward preaching. Uh, many of our ministerial students at Georgetown um, were interested in lots of other things but not preaching. So we wanted to do something to encourage uh, preaching, to inspire and support young people who, to consider preaching as a vocation because we consider it a very important, both in its spiritual and social, uh, transformational uh, power. So, in a casual conversation with the Lilly Endowment uh, two, um, two and a half years ago, they said, let's try it. Uh, they gave us some funding. We uh, did a trial run last year uh, here in Louisville at a Baptist church in town. And we had 92 preachers the first year in the, in the midst of a terrible <laughs> ice and snowstorm. Right. But it was such a powerful event. Um, we immediately began planning the second one, and here we are at the Seelbach Hilton with the plenary sessions in the Cathedral of the Assumption across the street. So. And 130? We had 130 paid registrants. Um, of those, four so far have uh, had to cancel mm -hmm. for one reason or another. There may be one or two more mm -hmm. that don't, doesn't show up, but looks like we're going to have about 125, all of whom will preach. Mm -hmm. Uh, 16 minute sermons, we give them a limit. We had one young man go over that last year, a, a Pentecostal preacher, as you might imagine, <laughs> preached for almost uh, 25 minutes. But uh, Now you purposefully have organized this so that it reaches the broadest range of denominations and, and church groups. We actually think it may be the most ecumenical event in American Christianity. I wouldn't argue with that from the Orthodox, uh, Roman Catholic, Pentecostal, uh, all the evangelical groups, uh, all the mainline groups. Uh, it really has been amazing. I think it bears witness to the interest in preaching. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't advocate anything mm -hmm. except preaching. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be people here speaking in tongues, maybe not at the service, <laughs> but they practice it, but that's not, we're not advocating it. Uh, there are women here preaching, but we're not an advocate of women preaching. Um, we're, uh, we're just an advocate of preaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're called to preach and you've got a congregation that supports you, you're welcome to come and preach. And that's the only, only criteria. I was speaking with, with one of the young preachers earlier who said this was his second festival um, and how much he appreciated that broad range mm -hmm. of, of traditions because he said otherwise we would never have heard from some of these other traditions and, and how they preach. Everybody at this festival is going to hear something and see something outside of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are people here that have never even met an Orthodox priest. There are people here who've never met a black preacher or a Pentecostal, or a female preacher. Mm -hmm. So uh, you've got uh, everybody is going to hear and feel something, but it's a great opportunity for people to influence one another. Mm -hmm. Not only to be influenced, and to be shaped, and to be broadened, but to be a person of influence. And this is what we encourage. I remember last year I had one young man from Trevecca Nazarene, which is a holiness school, which is a mm -hmm. Nazarene school down in Nashville. and. He called me up and said, um, now, Dr. Moody, you know we're holiness people down here. How do you want us to preach when we come up <laughs> there? And I said to him, exactly like you do when you go into your pulpit. We want you to wear what you wear, to stand like you stand, to move like you move, to speak like you speak, to issue an appeal like you do. We want holiness preaching. Mm. And I feel very strongly about this. We want Pentecostal preaching. We want Orthodox preaching. We want Catholic preaching. Do you think preaching as an art 
is threatened in our culture today? Is, are we going to lose the live event? I'm actually going to preach on this on, <laughs> okay. on Saturday at the closing session about the power of the human voice. Uh, I believe that the most powerful sound in the world is the human voice. And not all the smoke and screens and instruments can undermine that or displace it. And uh, any person using their voice to articulate a powerful moral vision for human life is going to get a hearing. They are the most influential people in the world mm -hmm. in any environment. And this is what I tell young people. And um, there are many ways to be a person of influence and significance and to follow your vocation, but none of more significance and more influence socially as well as spiritually as a person who speaks the gospel into the public square. Dwight, where do you see this organization going in the years ahead? This organization is like a pile of clay on a potter's <laughs> wheel right now. It's being shaped by the people who have gotten involved with it. For instance, um, when we announced plans for our first festival, one school in Atlanta, your hometown, Morehouse College, decided to have their own campus festival. So they, unbeknownst to us, uh, scheduled, I think, a two or three week um, invitation for any of their young men to come and preach. It's an all-male school, you know. Mm -hmm. They heard them all, picked out their best four, and paid their way to the National Festival last year. We were so impressed by this that we hosted four of these around the country, one in Texas, one in Missouri, one in Ohio, and one in Georgia this past year. This coming year, we will have at least 10, maybe as many as 12. Uh, the following year, this will double. So this is one of the things in canvases all across the country. These events that we are co-sponsoring, we hope will bring attention to preaching that will um, um, empower young people, that will raise the visibility of preaching as a vocation and attract talented young speakers. That's one thing that's going to happen. We've all already been approached by people in South America and Africa who want to host mm. the festival, uh, the festival of young preachers in Africa. Uh, so we think this will happen. Also, the, the camps. Um, when we started this, uh, there were no, as far as we know, no preaching camps anywhere in America for anybody of any age. And. Um, you know, I was at on the faculty at Georgetown for many years, and we had seven, eight, nine campers every summer. Mm -hmm. And you could go to camp there for everything from twirling a baton <laughs> to balancing an equation. Mm -hmm. Sports camps, leadership camps, band camps, uh, academic camps, church camps, for everybody except preachers. Mm -hmm. So this coming summer, in 2011, we'll have four camps. Um, and uh, we think this will um, move around the country. Uh, we'll replicate this. Uh, schools want to do it. Denominations want to do it. It's a way, I mean, everybody recognizes that even the preachers we have need to be better. Mm -hmm. And we need to attract uh, and inspire uh, better uh, young people to preach. For more information about the work of the academy, well, our website uh, is the chief place where we put our information, um, the Academy of Preachers dot net. Uh, we welcome people who want to partner with us. Every single week, we get calls or emails from people who say to us, "We just heard about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. We want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. We want to come. We want to host something." And uh, just yesterday, Idaho the Nazarene University in Idaho, they want to have a camp. Uh, and he found it on, on the website. Mm -hmm. 
And so if people are interested, they can call us. My email, my phone number is on the website. It's my cell number. They can call me direct. We'll be glad to talk with them to help institutions, denominations, businesses around the country um, in their interest in uh, inspiring, supporting young people in their call to gospel preaching. Well, Dwight, we at day one are honored to be a partner in this important effort. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're delighted, Peter, with day one and your interest in this. You've had a long-standing interest in preaching, and we hope that this uh, new fresh focus on young preachers will not only uh, uh, bring fresh energy and outlook to your programs, but uh, our partnership will flourish Great. for the cause of the kingdom. Amen. Great. Thank you. Thank you.